Hey guys, so you probably recognize this look from my last video, but I just love to film on the same day considering, you know, I already have my makeup done and it's like saving an hour of makeup doing. I've been obsessed with a certain kind of video, which is like what I'm not buying, makeup products I'm passing on. And it's mainly Abby Williams that I saw uh, making these kind of videos. I know that she's not the creator of this challenge. I don't actually know who is. There are so many mixed, some people saying it's this person, some people saying this person. So I'm just saying I found it from Abby and then I saw a lot of just in general influencers always make these kind of videos and i find them super interesting because i think in the times of like bye 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 get more makeup i think it's super interesting to just say like this is not the makeup i need and i have a lot of makeup and there is some makeup that i just don't need i get most of my makeup updates like what's coming out new releases on trend mood or, or the official instagram page for the makeup product makeup company most of these are from trend mood one of them is from anastasia beverly hills like the original instagram account but let's get into it the first product is from huda beauty and it is these lip balms they're called diamond hydrating lip balms they look like a diamond on top like they're cut like a crystal but then the sides are covered in glitter like thick crusty gritty glitter and i just can't imagine that'd be too nice on the lips like it, is it supposed to double as like exfoliation but then glitter is basically plastic so it's just more plastic being added in i'm not sure what the glitter is made from you can have like plastic and then biodegradable glitter but i am just like this is such a gimmick like why can't we just have a normal lip balm i am so close to finishing this damn lip balm look at it we're on our last stretcher i'm so proud of myself so this is a big huge pass for me also i'm assuming these are going to be super over overpriced i want to know the price of these because these look like children makeup no offense i love a lot of huda stuff i love her eyeshadow palettes i heard her lipsticks are great stuff but this is a big no-no for me i saw this right it's from becca cosmetics i love becca highlighters but the one i had i gave to my mom because i was starting to buy new highlighters i saw this and i love a good gold pink shift highlight i have a lot of them and that's the problem i was almost sucked in to buying this gold pink shift highlight as if i don't already have them if you have this melt okay my accent is going to be awful but i think it's Illumination. correct me if i'm wrong it's the digital dust highlighter it's got a gold pink shift and it's got that same like pink gold glow same thing same thing so i don't need it like i don't need that highlight it's the same thing they really almost had me they really almost had me there i almost gave them my 30 quid also i have the trio from pat mcgrath and this one right here if you can't tell is the one with the pink shift so instead of a gold pink shift this is a more silver pink shift but you get the same like neony pink look on your face can you see that like the way it looks here is not as pink as it is on the face look at me growing up and being mature if this was me two years ago i would have snatched it up you don't need this i don't need this and i bet if you can find a pink highlighter in your collection you don't need it the next one is kind of an overarching one i've spoken about this brand before i'm not going to repeat myself actually i am benefit cosmetics they came out with a, a basically a beauty blender which is the exact same shape and color as a beauty blender usually the sponges tend to have a different shape or at least a different color benefit just slapped on their name on it and was like this is an original idea i'm just not a huge fan of benefit i think their shade ranges are lacking their products are lacking innovation lacking ideas creativity lacking i want to see them come out with some good stuff or just focus on the stuff that they do well which is brows because this foundation right here the one that's standing behind the beauty sponge because the beauty sponge is made for this exact range of foundations like they're supposed to be like a duo set it's called the hello happy family so like hello happy is the foundation and this is the hello happy makeup sponge and that's the reason i'm talking about the foundation because it has like eight shades like probably the one you're seeing in the picture i think from what i can remember the darkest one they have so just as a whole i'm skipping on this whole hello happy family stuff but also benefit isn't cruelty free so not only are they excluding black people they're also excluding people that don't want to harm animals i don't understand next pat mcgrath my absolute queen i have a pat mcgrath palette lately i've fallen in love with pat mcgrath she is my pride my joy my everything she commented on my instagram picture they're restocking the mothership for decadence palette and out of all her palettes it's probably the one i'm going to skip on because it is purely shimmers and i am not a big fan of those as in not shimmers i love shimmers but i don't like palettes that have no matte shades because i have this like thing that i can't possibly get myself to use more than one palette for an eye look like it it, it takes a lot for me to grab two palettes for one eyeshadow look usually i love if i can get start to finish with one palette and this is obviously not what's going to happen here this is going to be an expensive palette for basically no matte shades 
so yeah this is the palette i'm probably going to skip on because i don't think you could do a cohesive look with it i think this is more just like an additional palette if you already have other staple palettes that you have but as a whole pat mcgrath palettes 10 out of 10. the next thing is nars i'm going to start off with nars used to be cruelty free and then they announced that they were starting to sell in china obviously the rules and laws and regulations are now slowly changing in china so maybe soon we won't have to you know skip out on brands that sell in china but i just want to say nars is really 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 pushing this whole orgasm collection thing can they please just move on we get it orgasm was one of your like most popular blushes it was like the blush shade that everyone wanted i wanted it too and i didn't end up getting it and then i realized you guys aren't cruelty free and then i had to completely give up on my hopes and dreams of trying this blush that every single youtuber told me to buy and now i just feel like you're really 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 running with this all thing and i think maybe come up with like a new iconic shade and make a collection around it but i'm just i feel like every time i go on trend mood if i see nas it's 100 percent going to be an all collection a hundred percent obviously all of this is my opinion like if you guys really want to buy these products please do i am just kind of showing you that you don't have to buy everything like there is no need to get everything you can skip out on a few collections and you will be just fine because most of it is the same thing gucci has recently started coming out with their own makeup which i don't believe in luxury brands and makeup i think most of them are really bad i think i much prefer like the mid-tier makeup aka like anastasia beverly hills melt cosmetics i think they have impeccable quality whereas like chanel dior uh gucci i just don't see the quality there for the price that they are asking me to pay like pat mcgrath i'll pay gucci not quite and gucci has come out with these powders they are probably really expensive they haven't provided a price but they're probably very expensive and also people are complaining about the shade ranges because they're wondering if the shade in the bottom left corner is the darkest shade and if it is why the next thing is mario badescu is coming out with a hyaluronic dew cream which is very on brand right now because there is that like glass skin dewy beautiful juicy skin trend with uh skincare which i love myself but there is one problem mario badescu first of all if you watch hiram he made a video on mario badescu and every single product in the line and it's not great like the ingredients aren't good and the recent articles that came out that they were actually using steroids in some of their products uh, this is all alleged information but i just wouldn't risk it and there's a lot of alcohol just a lot of drying ingredients in the products for the price that they're asking so i just don't trust this 26 dollars hyaluronic dew cream when, when i have my trusted face creams yeah moving on kkw i'm gonna just put kkw as a whole in this anti-haul because i understand the vibe of the brand don't get me wrong i think kim kardashian always says very like simple minimalistic but like beautiful and perfect makeup i do understand but there is not a single product from kkw that has like called out to me there is not a part of me that wants to pay shipping from america and customs so like taxes on a pinky blush and a yellow highlighter with kkw i just feel like i could really buy this from like a drugstore brand no offense i think the quality could be great and if it is let me know if you've tried any KKW products and you think they're great and I need to try them out. Let me know. But right now, I haven't seen a single product that I was like, I need this right now. Next, Glam Light. I get the vibe. I get how cutesy the makeup is. It's all like food packaging. But this specific one, this donut one, this the, it's like a pillow and it's a circle. First of all, I hate I hate there's not a thing that infuriates me more than eyeshadow palettes that are not a standard shape, aka a square or a rectangle, because my drawers. I like them organized a certain way and this would just ruin the whole vibe so i just cannot do it but also it would it's so thick like first of all you just can't take it anywhere with you not that i travel a lot but this is just a palette that would always stay at home and i tend to not grab the big palettes because they're at the bottom of my drawer and the smaller palettes are at the top of my drawer so always just grab the smaller palettes and the big ones are left to collect dust i've now learned that i am not a big palette girl the most i do is like maybe 16 shades if it's like you know small like four by four that's i'm kind of okay with that but now i'm i'm very big on like how many shades of this palette am i actually going to use and out of 30 shades i'm maybe going to use 15 and it's just the packaging i can't get over it i think this is cute and if you're into glam light and the whole cutesy like vibe do it but for me i just cannot fit it into my drawer it doesn't go with the aesthetic and I just am over big palettes. I want small, compact, and curated. 
KVD, Kat Von D now has turned into KVD Beauty, which means that none of the money goes to Kat Von D. So if you want to buy from the brand now, you can. But they launched this, which is a new eyeshadow palette by KVD Vegan Beauty. Uh, it's called the Kitten Mini Neopop Shade and Light Eyeshadow Palette. So they're using the shade and light to kind of like pull people back in because shade and light was like one of her most popular collections. It's $19, which I think is pretty reasonable for the prices, I think, but you're only getting four shades. But also look at the shades. That is the most uninspired I've ever been by a palette. Like, what can you do with that? One look. One look is what you can do. I think this is not a step in the right direction. I think the blushes were a step in the right direction because blush is super big right now. Blush is like the it thing that everyone is doing. But this is scrap it. Scrap it right now because I don't see anyone being like, oh yeah, this is what I want to buy as my eyeshadow palette. The next one is the Glossier Hand Cream. So I definitely thought about buying this, but then I'm thinking it's so much waste. Like, I don't know about this packaging. It's one expensive. I'm assuming it's gonna be about like $20, but also just the packaging is a lot. Like, I understand like this packaging is obviously like, it's it's less. You're gonna use this for a long time if you have to throw this little tube away and it's a small amount of stuff to throw away. But that is like full on hard plastic. And I just think, if it was refillable somehow, and if we had more like glossy physical stores that you could go to and they would refill it for you, that'd be cool. So this would be like the packaging and then you can refill the middle. But if I have to throw this away every time I finish my hand cream, I'll feel so awful passing on this, even though I'm a huge glossy fan. Next, Charlotte Tilbury. Charlotte Tilbury is a brand that I want to do a full face off, like a full face of Charlotte Tilbury, because I think their makeup looks stunning and their Instagram looks stunning, but they're coming out with this lip oil. And this lip oil is like $60, $50. I remember like I saw the price and I was like, I am never getting this. Like, this is insane to me. Why would you ever pay that much for a lip oil? Next, Morphe. Finally, they're coming out with small palettes. Not like I'm gonna buy from them because I'm not a big Morphe fan. I I've never tried their eyeshadows, but it just, Morphe just makes me feel a little icky. Maybe if they like fixed up their act a little bit more, I would be more like content with trying out their products. But right now I'm just a little bit like, you've made so much mess. But I'm glad that they're coming out with more curated small palettes because the 30 pan palettes can go. I don't... When you look at them, most of the shades are repeats of each other. You're never going to see the difference between one brown and another brown on your eyes if they're like one shade apart. So I'm glad they're doing this. This is a good move, Morphe. Nine pan palette. Do it. Run with it. House Labs. This is disappointing. Because I think Lady Gaga could have really pulled through with like a Fenty. Or oh, actually, House Labs could have been the replacement of Kat Von D. Because Kat Von D was like the edgy one. She bought in like the goth look. And I think Lady Gaga could have really bought that in and she would have been like, I'm not problematic, but I'm going to bring you the same goth fantasy you want. And what we got was just very simple makeup. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I just don't think it like calls out my name. So she's adding more shades to her lip glosses and her lip pencils, which is lovely, great. It's just not something that really calls out my name. And I know that's a controversial statement to make because a lot of people are very like into Lady Gaga. Trust me, I love Lady Gaga too. She's great. But this makeup just isn't something that I'm like, oh, I need it right now. And I have so many lip glosses to get through and so many lip liners to get through that I just, this is not on my like priority list to try out. And I know a lot of people were very disappointed by one, the products that she came out with, but also two, the fact that she was selling exclusively through Amazon, which is one of the more problematic companies. Next is the 420 collection from Melt. So last year they came out with one and I have the palette. It's the Smoke Obsessions palette. It's basically all shimmers except for two shades, which is why I don't use it as much, but I think it's stunning. And this is basically the Gemini palette just switched around. So I really, really wanted it. And then I remembered that I basically have it in the Gemini palette and the Smoke Obsessions palette. So I don't feel the need to get this one. But also there's only one shimmer shade in there. The Smoke Obsessions palette is basically all shimmers and the Gemini palette has two shimmers. So it's more balanced. I love the eyeliners. I would love the green one, but they're not selling on Beauty Bay. And I think if I got it from the Melt website, the shipping could like kill me. They also came out with the Rust palette, which is also very similar to the Gemini palette. So these are all kind of repeat shades. And as much as I love Melt, I'm just not willing to have that many eyeshadows because I'm literally never going to get through them. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to get palettes that are like different, something that I don't already have in my collection, something that's going to bring something like new and spicy into my life. But this 420 collection and the Rust palette is basically the Gemini and Smoke Obsessions palette. So I'm not getting it. That's the responsible decision that I am making right now as an adult. Next, Revolution. I'm kind of over Revolution. I always was because they were basically the brand that made copy dupes of more expensive products. Like, down to the T and I just wasn't ever with it. And then recently they copied Manny MUA's 
like custom packaging that he paid thousands to have the rights to and create so no one else is allowed to use that packaging so they technically illegally used the packaging without knowing that they're illegally using it but they basically just copied him and he made them recall the product because it was his custom packaging that he paid thousands for to create and have the rights to so they're just giving me a very icky vibe it's like almost they can't come up with their own stuff i think just because you're an affordable brand doesn't mean you have to make products that look exactly like higher end products you can just make affordable products that are creative and original this is something that has tempted me because i love a good setting spray and this one is a soft focus that screams my name a soft focus setting spray and it looks like this beautiful mist do you see this picture but it is 48 dollars. that is insane and if i get it if i get this setting spray you can virtually slap me through the screen be like what are you doing with your money but it's calling my name that mist and that soft focus tagline this product i'm super upset about right so it's the patrick tar soap brows thing so it's like a cream one and then it's a brown one i'd obviously get the cream one because the brown one's like too dark for me but the bushy brows thing doesn't look good on me this is all i can do in regards to bushy and full like this is this is it this is all i can do and apart from that it just looks pretty bad on me i think my face is so pale and so like i don't know there's just something about my face where if i have really bushy brows it makes it look like my makeup's super messy but i wish i could get into the the, the this like soap brow trend because i think everyone else looks so good in it and they're all like doing this soap brow thing and they're like pushing these eyebrows up or they're laminating them and i'm like I wish I could relate. And this has the Beverly Hills lip glosses. They're great. I have four mini ones from like a different collection that I bought like two years ago, but I have too many lip glosses, too many. Some of them barely used like once or twice. I'm never gonna get through all of these lip glosses. So I, I'm not, I was this close once again, this close. I'm not saying I will never buy lipstick again because I think these anti holes push this like idea that I will never buy these products. There could come a chance where I buy these four lip glosses and be like, I own up, I took the L, I bought it, I fell for it. But all I'm saying is I think these videos are very important to just show you that you don't actually need some of these things. You can actually get away with not buying them shock so this is just me more talking to myself and saying stop these physio palettes get me so these ones and then the six no the eight pan ones they are like this tiny they're basically roughly like these kind of sizes this is the naked two basics like do you guys remember this and then it's almost like these kind of sizes as well these are the zoeva like mini travel palettes these are basically the smaller versions of the big palettes so they, they have like the caramel melange big palette and then they have this one which is Oh my god, I just dug my nail into it! Look! <laughs> Look how tiny it is! You can bring these, you have six shades, you have a transition shade, you always have a light shade, a few shimmers, a few mattes. These are such cute palettes, I wish I used them more. But I'm gonna take them when I travel. But here's, here's, here's the here's the point, right? Whenever I look at these small eyeshadow palettes, what do I say to myself? Oh my god, you could use it for when you're going on holiday. I think I go on max two holidays a year. Do I need 5,000 mini eyeshadow palettes to go on holiday for like three or four weeks out of the year? But I love this palette. I think it's adorable. It's so cute, so pretty, so summery. I don't need it. Please tell me guys that I don't need it and tell me some makeup that you guys need and don't need. You don't need any makeup, that's the tea. But what do you want and then what do you don't need? Let me know. Next one is Charlotte Tilbury again. She's got the Magic Serum Crystal Elixir and it's $80 for 30 milliliters. Am I the only one that doesn't trust like makeup brands skincare? Like I think if you're a makeup brand, be a makeup brand, but then I never, I, I get that you can be an expert in both, but I don't trust that Charlotte Tilbury would have like skincare stuff worth $80. And I think she's only setting those prices because she thinks she can. I think set those prices for your makeup, that's fine. You can have a high-end makeup thing, but I just, are these skincare products worth the price tag based on ingredients? I would love for Hiram to review like Charlotte Tilbury skincare because I think he'd have a lot to say about it. I'm going to cry. This is not in my anti-haul because I don't want it. This is my anti-haul because I'm upset. Kaja doesn't sell in the UK. Kaja's mainly sold in Sephora and Sephora is not in England. We don't have a Sephora so I can't get Kaja. So I can only get that when I go to America and all of my American holidays for this year have been cancelled. Kristen Dominique is really saying kind of like these skin glosses I guess. They're like highlighters but they're in cream form. They look stunning but the only shade that I could buy is the top left one because all the other ones are way too dark for me which is perfect. I'm glad that she's doing the inclusive thing. So if you're thinking about it the top left shade is basically the same thing as my Glossier Holoscope in 
quartz. Look at it. It's the same, basically the same shade. This is like slightly more champagne-y, that's more yellow. But like, are you really going to see the difference on the skin? And do you need more than one cream product that looks the same? No. Next thing is Hourglass. They brought back like a Christmas product. It's the Ambient Metallic Strobe Lighting Palette. And at first, I thought these were like the setting powders that you put all over your face. No, they're all, all three of those are, are highlighters. They're going to look exactly the same on the skin. Are you kidding me? I already have the one on the left in a different palette, but I was hoping that one of them would be a highlighter and then the other two would be a powder and then I would get it because it's always a good deal. So it's, it's, it's always a good deal to get these like mini hourglass ones, like the ones in like, I just wish that they weren't all three. The next one is Natasha Denona. She's releasing these three cream highlighters and they are like $38. Once again, my glossy stick, the other two are too dark for me. So it's going to be the one on the left and the one on the left is super similar to the Glossier one. I'm passing on it. <laughs> See me saving money as we speak. Gucci. They're also releasing a all over the face and lip gloss for $33. It's a pot of basically Vaseline, right? Because that's what it looks like. It's, it looks like Vaseline for $33. And I hate the idea of putting it anywhere but my lips. And I'm not paying $33 for basically a glorified Vaseline. And I would hate to put on my eyes. I get it looks incredible on Instagram and in like photo shoots, but in everyday life, it's not happening. My eyelids are so greasy as it is that this would just be a slip and slide nightmare. So we're not doing it. Next one, the balm. The balm has never come out with anything that interested me other than the highlighters. I used Mary Lou, which was chef's kiss from what I can remember. I would love to try again. And Cindy Lou, which was like the more pinky one. And I would use that one as a blush topper, which looked adorable. I basically put like highlighter here and a little bit of the topper here and it would like blend into the highlight. And it was like such a look. I still have it. So I should probably start doing that again. That was such a look. But they don't come out with anything that then we have this Stila eyeshadow palette, which infuriated me because I hate it. It looks like Christmas and summertime mixed into one eyeshadow palette and I am confused. I don't think I could create a single look with this that would like make me happy, which is completely fine. Maybe someone out there really loves it, but I... This palette infuriates me. And the final one, so Anastasia Beverly Hills recently has been releasing these Norvina palettes, like the big ones for $60, and none of them have called out my name. Uh, like not a single one was one that would be like, oh, I need this. I really wanted to join the hype train of like buying these big palettes, but none of them looked good for me. Like none of them were like shades that I wanted to use. But I also heard that they weren't the Anastasia Beverly Hills formula, which was sad. Um, and some people actually had problems with these, uh, like blending, and they said they were just very difficult to use. They are artistry palettes though, like professional palettes. So there's always that. But they're now coming out with a fourth one and it is the Norvina Volume 4. I'm tempted, but this is basically the Norvina palette, like the, the smaller Norvina palette mixed with the Riviera palette. And I'd never bought the Riviera palette because it was too neony for me. I knew I would never get like the wear out of it. And then I love my Norvina palette. So I don't really need this one. Like the more I think about it, I love it, but do I need it? So I hope I don't like buy it because I hope I don't spend $60 on an eyeshadow palette that I never get to use because I'm going to use my other palettes. And like I said, I am over the big eyeshadow palettes. This is 25 shades. Someone tell me that I don't need this palette. Please, all of you guys tell me that I don't need it. Anyway, that's the last product for today. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, anything in comment down below and subscribe because I post videos every time i think of an idea if you guys have any ideas for future videos then let me know hit that bell be notified when that's happening like all of this social media links and main channel in the description and i'll see you in my next one bye guys